Every day we are used to see airplanes flying in the sky. But how is it possible that these giant vehicles that can reach a weight of 500 tons are able to fly? The answer is quite easy. It's thanks to aerodynamics. Even if the answer is simple, the concepts behind this phenomena are very complex and need a huge amount of study from the engineers. Obviously, doing all the studies and tests on real aircraft is not possible due to the high operating cost. For this reason, aerospace manufacturers use wind tunnels. The great thing of modern era is that even a personal computer with a dedicated software is able to simulate the real airflow behavior. This software uses a technology called CFD that stands for Computational Fluid Dynamics, solving numerically complex differential equations. So, let's explain this phenomena using simplified equations. First of all, we are considering air as an incompressible fluid, because in doing so, it's valid the Bernoulli equation. The Bernoulli equation states that increasing the speed of the fluid, the static pressure decreases and vice versa. Now, considering an airfoil in a horizontal airflow coming from this direction, we can observe that in these two areas the velocity drops, and so the pressure raises. Meanwhile, in these other two areas the velocity raises, and so the pressure drops. So, if we represent the relative pressure, we obtain a distribution like this one. Note that the pressure above the airfoil is lower than the pressure below. For this reason, there is a net vertical force, the lift. Similarly, near the left part of the airfoil, the pressure is higher than in the right part. So, it results in a horizontal force called drag. The problem is that the lift may be too small in this configuration because in order to fly horizontally, it has to be equal to the weight of the aircraft. A better configuration can be obtained increasing the angle of the airflow in respect of the flow. In order to do so in a CFD software, it's possible to change the direction of the velocity vector of the airflow, called angle of attack. We're able to do so because we will get the same results. We can see that the velocity in this area is much higher than the previous one, giving us a lower pressure and so higher lift. The disadvantage is that it will also produce higher drag. There is a limit on how much we can increase the angle of attack, because over a certain limit, typically 12 degrees, there is a phenomenon called stall. The stall occurs when the airflow separates from the surface of the wing, resulting in less lift and higher drag. Moreover, looking at the CFD results, we can see that this is the separation region. Another disadvantage of higher angle of attack can be found analyzing the 3D behavior of the airfoil. The difference in pressure near the wing tip forces the air below the wing in the upper part, creating huge vortices causing a lot of induced drag. Obviously, the engineers have found a solution to block this process. It consists in using winglets, that are devices that you always see at the end of the wing. We hope that after seeing this video, the next time you will be on an airplane, you will be more conscious about the physics behind it. If you are curious about engineering facts, follow these two pages on Instagram. Have a good day!